consider this series here. Um, looks a little scary, a little complicated. And our question is, does this below series converge or diverge? Now, suggested approach might be to kind of go through a list of, of easier convergence tests to, um, to see if we can answer this easily. So f um, of these tests, first one you may want to start off with is a test for divergence. Um, this is kind of a hard limit to take. And if you did take it, you'd unfortunately find that, that the limit of that sequence is going to go to zero. So we can go ahead and cross this one out. You may also consider it as a geometric series, but that means it would have to fit into this format here on the right, and unfortunately it doesn't. So we're going to go ahead and cross this one out too. Next one you might want to test out is a P-series, but of course that's got to be in this exact format, which is not anywhere close to the format we have up here. So we can go ahead and cross this one out. Maybe you can consider a comparison test. However, to use a comparison test, this series up here would have to look something similar to a geometric or P-series, which unfortunately it doesn't. So we can go ahead and cross this out. But um, thankfully, we have the ratio test, which is actually going to work. And one of the kind of clues you can get here is if you have this factorial and uh, you have some exponents, these are kind of a good indication that the ratio test might be your friend. And um, in this case, it is. So let's, uh, let's see how that's going to work. But first of all, let's just kind of take a look back at our geometric series. Geometric series is shown here. Recall, if we know that this series is going to converge if the absolute value of r, our common ratio, is less than 1. But what is r? Well, r is just our common ratio, which is going to be the ratio between a subsequent term and the term before it. So if we look at a, a typical sequence like this, our r is just going to be what we multiply to get from a1 to a2, or from a2 to a3. Now, unfortunately, with our s sequence up here, there isn't going to be this common ratio that you can multiply just to get from one term to the next. This is going to vary, so we don't have a common ratio r. But what we can find is this ratio down here between terms that when n gets really, really big. We can find this, which we'll do here. And this isn't, you can't exactly call this L, but it's, this is, you can kind of think of this as L. It's not R, but it's, that, it's a ratio between terms when n gets really, really big. And it turns out if we find this L value, we can apply a very similar convergence criteria as we had for a geometric series. So back to our series here that we're trying to, to figure out. And Specifically now, we're going to try and figure out a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And what is a sub n? Well, of course, it's just this sequence here. So let's define a sub n. Now, if we want to find the top term in this ratio here, a sub n plus 1, all that we need to do is, is replace all these n's over here with n plus 1. If we do that, we get what's on our numerator here, where we just, we just added 1 to all the n's. And now for our a sub n term on the bottom here, we just got it. We just plug in this um, our a sub n term we've already defined, so that's pretty easy. And you may say this is pretty ugly, and I have to go ahead and agree with you on that. But uh, thankfully, there's a couple tricks we can pull out of the tool bag to um, simplify this a little bit. So the first trick we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and multiply both the top and bottom of this by the reciprocal of our denominator here. So we're going to take the reciprocal of what I circled here and multiply that by the top and the bottom. And as you can see on the bottom, we're multiplying by the reciprocal, so these are, that's going to cancel out. Our numerator is going to cancel out with the denominator over here, and we're just going to be left with what's on top. So this is what's on top. Now it turns out the, with these factorials, we can actually simplify those a little bit too. So let's do a little aside here and try and determine what n factorial over n plus 1 quantity factorial is going to be. n factorial on the numerator here is just going to be n times n minus 1, times n minus 2, all the way down to 2 and, and until we finally get to 1. So you're just multiplying all the, the terms that are um, less than n. And n plus 1 is actually going to be pretty close to the same thing on, the, on our denominator here. We're just going to start off with n plus 1 instead. So we're going to start off with n plus 1 here, and then we're going to multiply by all the same terms that we multiplied up here up on the top. So you can imagine if we're going to divide here, these n's are going to cancel out, n minus 1's will cancel out, n minus 2 cancels out, 2 cancels out, 1 cancels out, and we're just left with 1 over n plus 1. So this actually gets pretty simple. And so if we apply that over here 
on the right, we find that that basically just means we can cross out this n factorial, cross out that factorial here, and we're left with um, a bit more simplified of an expression. Although admittedly, it's still still a little complicated, and we can and we can do some more to it. But first, let's clear out some of this a little bit. Let's go ahead and move this to the top and and keep working on it. So it turns out we can actually simplify this um, 4 to the n plus 1 over 4 to the n here. And that's because 4 to the n plus 1 is just 4 to the n times 4. So all this right here, we're just going to say that's just going to equal 4. So now we can bring this down. And um, we're getting close now. Um, we can actually make this easier on ourselves if um, while we're at it, we just go ahead and distribute. So if we distribute, we end up with this. And now, one more thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and divide by n on the top and bottom. And this is going to help us in a minute, as, you, as you'll see. So we divide by 1 over n. And you can see that this, this n is going to cancel with this n here. And this is just going to be 8 over n. And this is just going to change to n and this n is going to cancel out and we're just going to be left with 2 over n. So finally we're left with this and remember what this was was this was our a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. This is the ratio between a subsequent term and the term before it. But what we're really interested in is what this ratio looks like when n gets really really big. So we want to find our l term. And that L term is going to be the limit of this ratio right here. And, and we're also going to take the absolute value of it. Because remember, for the geometric series, we want the absolute value of R. In the same case, we're going to want the absolute value of L. So we've got these absolute value notation here. And you can, you can see that this limit's pretty easy now that we've got it into this form. So this, um, as n approaches infinity, 8 over n is going to go to 0. n's going to go to infinity. 2 over n is going to go to 0. And so we're going to end up with something really, really big on the bottom in the denominator, which means that this is going to approach 0, which is less than 1. Now, um, just to step back a little bit, the reason that I, I did all this work over here on the side before applying that limit is just so I don't have to apply that limit notation and absolute value all the way down. So this is just a bit, just to save you a little work of having to rewrite the limit every time. You can just look at, find a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And once you finally got it into a form, now let's go ahead and apply that limit. And, um, and you can see we're getting a value that's less than 1. And this, you can apply the same convergence criteria we had for the geometric series in this case. And because that, this L value is going to be less than 1, we can go ahead and definitively say that this series is going to converge by the ratio test. So let's go ahead and box that in red because this is sort of our final solution. So this is the solution to this particular problem, but let's go ahead and look at what the ratio test says more generally. And it's pretty similar to geometric series test. Um, some small differences though. So what it says is that we have this series of a sub n. We can definitively say that it is going to converge if that L value, which was the limit of the ratio, or the absolute value of the ratio as n approaches infinity. If that's less than 1, like we just showed, then we know this series is going to converge. And um, this, hopefully this kind of makes sense intuitively, because it's, it's similar to the geometric series test. And we find if that common ratio is going to be less than 1, that means that subsequent terms are going to get appreciably smaller um, as you keep going. If, they're, if the terms are getting appreciably smaller, then you can expect that that series is, is finally going to converge. Alternatively, we can say that this series will diverge if that same limit L is greater than 1, because what this means is that subsequent terms are going to get bigger. If subsequent terms are getting bigger and bigger, that means, of course, if you keep adding all those up, that that series is going to diverge. So this is our ratio test. And you may ask the question here, we haven't really defined what happens if this limit does equal 1. Now, if, if you go through all this work and you find that that limit does equal 1, well, unfortunately, that's going to be inconclusive. So don't be discouraged. I'm sure you got a lot of good practice going through all that. But unfortunately, what that means is you're going to have to move on to a different convergence test.